Welcome back. You're watching the full view. Well, the future of peacekeeping in Africa has been an important issue of the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York this week. It's estimated that half of all peacekeeping missions are based in Africa and provide the UN with some of its greatest challenges. Our defense and military veterans minister, Nosivi Wemapi Sangakula, is in New York and joins our correspondent, Sean Bryce Peace, at our UN Bureau. Sean, over to you. Shante, thanks very much indeed. And you correctly point out I am joined by South Africa's Minister for Defence and Military Vet Veterans, of course, engaged in a number of meetings here with the Department of Peacekeeping Operations, uh, the Department of Field Support, uh, in terms of the role South Africa continues to play in terms of mitigating uh, conflicts and, and, and peace solutions on the African continent. Minister Nosiviwa Mapisa Nakula, it's always good to see you. Welcome Thank back you. to New York. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with the DRC. The winds of political change we are seeing blowing across Congo. The new president, Felix Chesikedi, spoke in the General Assembly yesterday. But still, of course, some challenges in the east of the country. The armed groups, particularly the ADF, but also the Ebola crisis has claimed now over 2,100 lives. Are you satisfied uh, with the military investment that South Africa has made? Are you beginning to see this bear fruit? Well, yes. I think um, from where we are and considering where we come from, I think there's a lot of work which has been done. And I think the one reason why the President of the Democratic Republic of Congo is can actually speak with confidence and call on investors to go to, to invest in the Democratic Republic of Congo, it is because he's assured that parallel to everything which he is doing, there are people who are ensuring that there is peace and stability in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and with specific reference in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Remember, the president, the Democratic, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, is a member of of SADC region, and within SADC, we are we keep our 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 fingers on the on the pulse with regards to the developments there and of course uh, if you talk about the negative forces i think we've done very well except that as you eliminate some negative forces new ones spring up so it's a it's a very complicated situation but a situation which the region has managed to handle very well. So let me ask you this. Of course, there is a strategic review of MONUSCO that was mandated by the UN Security Council, I believe in March this year, uh, that basically says that by, the, by October 20th, this review needs to be complete, presented to the Council, and this includes uh, a phased, progressive, and comprehensive exit strategy of MONUSCO from the DRC. But of course, when you talk about an exit strategy, you cannot not refer to what is actually happening on the ground. You talk about the complexities in the DRC. What is South Africa's position about a possible drawdown of MONUSCO in the, in the medium term? Actually, the South Africa's position is informed by a discussion, a dialogue amongst ourselves, member states within the region. So the position which I will pronounce on is a position of the region, which is that as I was coming here, we've just come out of a meeting as the region together with the United Nations, the team mm -hmm. that was dealing with this matter, which was conducting this review, which correctly so will be submitting a report on the 20th of October. So we were expressing our views as a region about what the roadmap should be, what we think should happen as talk of, of a review is underway, as talk of a withdrawal of MONUSCO from the TRC is being branded with. The issue for us is that there should be a gradual withdrawal of forces. And in any event, our view is that as you deploy forces to any area, in any kind of conflict. You should always ensure that you are deploying, but you also have plans for an exit of your troops. And this is, these are some of the things which we are raising. So we're saying as SADC, we're happy with the, with the proposal. However, that process should be taken throughout up to 2020. The final, final withdrawal of MONUSCO from the Democratic Republic of Congo should be at least December 2022. We are now in 2019. 
But in addition, we are saying the Force Intervention Brigade in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, which has a separate mandate, you know, even though it is part of the Framework Brigade, we, we are requesting that it should be the last one mm. to withdraw, precisely because of the nature of the work. So the FIB should doing. stay there till the, the end? The FIB is a robust force. It, is, it engages, and, and therefore, if you are to remove the FIB, if you are to withdraw them from the East right now, you should be certain that you have something you're going to put in place which will engage in similar actions as the one... Because you are immediately concerned that there might be a security vacuum. Yes, we don't want a security vac vacuum. And of course, the Democratic Republic of Congo should ensure that it builds capacity such that, and even the region, you know, continue to look at what is the threat assessment, what do we see as the nature of the threat in that area, and depending on the threat analysis which has been conducted, put appropriate measures and therefore deploy according to the size of the threat. What's your sense of the capacity within the uh, defense force of the, of the DRC? I think FADAC is doing very well in terms of training. I know that the, several countries have come in and assisted them in training their soldiers. South Africa is one of those. I also know that uh, we have been dealing with issues of sec the security sector reform in that country. I know that there is a military strategy which was developed together with us by South Africans assisting okay. FADAC. So I think that they are trying their best to get to a point. It doesn't matter if it takes 10, 15 years where they will be self-sustainable well they'll be independent and will be able to handle their mm. issues as a country and of course it's, it's it's not something which is going to happen tomorrow minister we've also seen a reduction in the sad uh, sandf troop numbers in the drc particularly the force intervention brigade a cut of 50 troops and this was based on un budget cuts a decision that was actually very heavily criticized by yourself. I'm quoting you here. It's my responsibility as the Minister of Defense to ensure that no body bags come back to South Africa. Where do matters stand in terms of your engagement on that issue? Sherwin, one of the things which, em which we've emphasized with, um, out from this meeting is the importance, as you keep your FIB there, the importance of ensuring that, one, you deploy the necessary resources for the FIB, now, resources may be financial. It has to do also with capabilities. One of the most controversial issues which, which have been discussed over a long period of time is that of deployment of air assets. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can have people deployed in an area and then you, not, you don't provide them with the necessary air cover. As South Africa, even in Parliament, we've made our position very clearly that for as long as we are part of the force intervention brigade, for as long as we've deployed in that particular area, in that kind of terrain, in that jungle, you will need the deployment of your air assets. It and therefore jungle. and therefore on the matter of the deployment of the Roy Falk, it is we are not backing down. We are insisting that uh, the UN Security Council should find a way of mobilizing the necessary resources so that so there's a concern so, so the UN is wanting to cut costs they're saying we don't want to pay for these helicopters anymore and you're saying but you need these helicopters because I don't if, want my troops if, sent back in if, body bags if you need the boots on the ground then you need air assets as well so the talk of a uh, cutting down of the budget mm. I think people should cut the budget but we should also that should not take us ten step backwards there's a lot of progress which has been made in the Democratic Republic of Congo a lot of progress made even in that particular area of the East and if you are going you are going to talk budgetary constraints rather than investing in a recurrence in preventing a recurrence of what has happened over the years then you're going to run into problems sometimes you you have to to take the risk and and provide uh, what is necessary domestically you are also faced with budget cuts in your department mm -hmm. you've criticized this he uh, heavily how bad is the underfunding in the Def department of defense and what does that mean for south africa's role uh, in terms of peacekeeping uh, maybe a greater role on the african mm -hmm. continent outside of the drc well, I can assure you that as a country, being a country which is advocating for peace and stability in our continent, 
we remain deeply committed in taking forward that vision of that great man, that icon, Madiba, of creating a peaceful continent. And therefore, there is no way South Africa, in, in spite of the fiscal constraints which are there, which we now understand in the context of the national fiscus and course, its challenges and the economy and how it has been performing. Now, but you can't because of that then take decisions that you will not make some of the interventions which you are required to make in order for us to have a stable south africa in order for us to continue to have the kind of prosperity we see we have to nip some of these things in the bud which means that prevention of conflict yeah. In the in the in the in the continent is should be one of well, the priorities. Well, this is African Union policy, right? It's yes. silencing the guns by by 2020, 2020 as part of the bigger vision of 2063. Yes. So let me ask you this, Minister. We talk now about sort of our vision for the mm -hmm. continent. What's South Africa's role beyond uh, the borders of the DRC? Uh, I'm hearing rumours in this building that there are some approaches being made to the South Africans in terms of perhaps a, a role in the Sahel. One of the most volatile peacekeeping missions that the UN currently operates is in Mali and of course there's a proliferation of terrorist groups in that region that extends from Mali all the way to Egypt known as the Sahel. Is there a greater role that South Africa is considering in that region? Well, Sherwin, one of the things we believe in as a, as a country is that uh, countries should invest a lot in multilateral engagements, right? And what that means is that we should promote Dialogue. Our, our regions a dialogue within our regions and therefore even whatever approach no approach for now I've not had but if we were to be approached to go to the Sahel, Sahel region it would be that by then a lot has been worked a lot of work has been done by the region itself to try and 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 give support to the countries which are affected by conflict there we would not move in we discourage South Africa from moving the direction of bilateral engagements in in these kinds of deployments it should be on the base of the multilateral institutions which be, we belong in and therefore if SADC is requested to come in and then SADC takes a decision that South Africa maybe you should consider maybe it's something which the commander-in-chief would want to consider but for now I'm not aware of it I am aware that there are moves that we probably should send some military observers to the Central African Republic and there too we are waiting for a note verbal which will confirm that. I have to wrap this now but let me ask you this one question. We've also seen changes in the Sudan, positive movements, there's a transitional government in place between the military and the civilian rule. We've seen the ouster of former President uh, Bashir who is an ICC indicted uh, a person that the ICC has requested be handed over to The Hague. South Africa is still a, a, a party to the Rome Statute, a member of that court is it time that Bashir be handed over to the to the International Criminal Court in your view? Well, I think uh, it is the people of Sudan and the region in that area who should take that kind of decision. I'm sure you'll recall that there was a time when uh, President, former President Bashir was in South Africa during a summit oh, we remember that. when people <laughs> wanted when the courts ruled that he should actually not leave the country but uh, should be indicted for the crimes he had committed and so on and we had to take a difficult decision of allowing him to leave the country because at the time we had soldiers deployed in Sudan in the area of Darfur who at that point were being surrounded by the Sudanese soldiers so at times you have to you have to stop being emotional you have to come down and reflect and do an assessment and a balancing act as to whether in fact you want to take a particular populist position uh, at the expense of the possible consequences so on this one i would say the country sudan right which now has a mix of civilian and uh, military. and military uh, government has the appropriate task of taking the decision whether they want to take their former president to the ICC or they want to have him indicted in the country and stand a trial in his own Crime country. Say, yeah. But it's their call. It's their call. It, it cannot be that uh, from where we are, we are the ones who want to prescribe or even to dictate. But if he to, were to come back to South Africa, he would be arrested and sent to The Hague. That's what I'm, I'm hearing from you, right? Because the circumstances have changed. 
but of course he won't. Actually, <laughs> Sherwin, obviously, cabinet would have to discuss. The point is, I was trying to make to you is, at the time when we took that particular, it was a difficult decision to take, but it was informed by the circumstances we found ourselves in, whereby we had soldiers on in his own country and, deployed. And, and there again, you and didn't therefore. want them coming back in body bags. Minister, always, course, always good course. to see you. Thank you very time much. Time is against Sherwin. us, unfortunately. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for your you, time. Sherwin. The Minister of uh, Defence and Military Veterans, Nosibiwe Mapisa Ngakula, speaking to us live here in our UN Bureau. Uh, let's go to a break. Uh, the full view continues right after this.